What's up guys, welcome back to McLaren Media. You join me today, we're heading up to Bristol in the Fiesta to pick up something very special that I've bought for the 350Z and my Little Max power build. So basically, yeah, we're gonna head to Bristol now. It's about an hour and a half trip from where I live um, and I'll catch up with you there and we'll see what I've bought. Okay guys, while we're here, well, I, just, I hope it's here, unit 10. Um, let's go see what we've bought. Parcel secured, let's get this show on the road. So guys, we're back at home. What have I actually bought? Well, I went to Bristol to pick up a set of 350Z seats. So I'll just give it a context. I was gonna put bucket seats in the 350 for the max power sort of style build, but I kind of went off it a little bit. One, I'm really big, so you kind of need XL seats. Two, um, they're really expensive and three it's finding ones that actually fit in the 350z on budget but then i found these and they're red which is what i'd have had the bucket seat colors in and also they've been retrimmed and i think they look really cool they just need a clean up and they're not too bad so let's see what i purchased this morning <music> really really excited about these these are a set of 350z standard front seats that have been reupholstered with this quilted leather design and they're red and they look sick i'm so excited to put these in i think they're going to work better than the bucket seats just for longevity um they're leather it feels really nice quality leather um it's obviously you know it's quilted it's, it's got this lovely design with it it looks really cool and i'm really a big fan of the color um, £250 I paid for these and I think that was an absolute bargain really because my seats look terrible so I'm just going to drop a shot in here mine look terrible these are really nice and all they really need is a decent clean up I think there's no tears there's no no really horrible markings on the lever the only one I can find is sort of there but that's on the driver's side one obviously that's where people get in and out it's going to bolster like that a little bit but overall they're very good quality don't really know much about the history of them. They were just ripped out of a 350Z that was in for braking, apparently. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with these. So overall, I'm really happy. I'm really excited to put these in the cars. First of all, I'm gonna give them a nice, deep clean, proper freshen up, leather clean, leather balm, all that sort of stuff. Gonna make them look really cool. And then we'll put them in the car. So first up, let's go and clean these up. God, that's so heavy. I don't know why they make electric car seats. Like right now, this one is completely redundant. You can't move this back piece at all. It's not even got a manual adjustment, it's just that that's how the chair is. Because something I've always found so difficult, it hurts my back, my arms, my brain, is this. Oh, look at that car manufacturers. Imagine if you could just move your chair like that. Oh, just... So yeah guys, as you just heard in my rant there, um, the, the sort of electric version of the chair, so the motorized chair versus the, um, the manual chair is that, yeah, this one is like, electrically assisted this one is a manual chair um the reason for that i was told by the person i bought them off is that obviously sometime in this life of whichever vehicle this came out of this driver's side chair had obviously failed electronically so they basically just replaced with a manual and kept the passenger because they're notorious for going wrong these chairs my 350z has the um, electric chairs um and i gotta admit they're a bit intermittent sometimes the back piece doesn't always go backwards and forwards so yeah that's just the weird thing about this this one's a manual adjustment chair this one's a electric chair um it doesn't really affect the ability to have the things i'm not sure if they're heated because obviously my 350z has got heated seats but i'm really not too fussed about that i've never used my electric heated seats in the car ever so um yeah let's um let's go on and clean these
Let's go get them in the car. So slow, so slow. <sighs> Back we go. So once you've basically set the seats and taken the bolts out you then have to go under the bonnet and disconnect the battery because you're now dealing with the airbag obviously but also because the seats are electric you've kind of got to disconnect all that so yeah basically you've got to do that which is a stupid step that you wouldn't have to do in most cars right so with the seat unbolted you can twist it on its side obviously in the car but look how many wires are in there for a seat like i just yeah it boggles my mind so guys here's today's lunch sorted mm, very nice Basically, now's a great time to give this a proper hoover up. There are rust marks on the inside carpet. That's why. All right, guys, so I've given it as good as clean as I can. Haven't got the best hoover here, unfortunately, but it's fine. It's not that dirty in there. So, um, yeah, let's get one of the new seats and see what it looks like. Particularly, you know, what the easiest way to do this is, but I'm just going to try and do a reverse of what I've just done on the exit of the seat. Push the front back bit in like that. And then see if I can connect everything underneath. I'm just going to tape off the electrical connectors under here purely because one you know it's good safety they're probably okay but they have got a constant 12 volt going to them even when the key's out and the ignition's off because they're for the motors and the heaters and stuff so yeah better safe than sorry you can see the metal pins and we're just going to tape them off and then we won't have to worry about them Okay guys, the seats are in, they look so cool. I had a bit of an issue with the passenger one. Basically the wiring loom was completely different. So I've had to completely destruct my chair, deconstruct my chair out of, out of the original black one and basically change like the motors and the loom. And yeah, it's just been a right palaver. I'll, I'll show you some shots on the screen of what was uh, what I found. But yeah, they're in now, they both work. The only thing is because I've had to borrow the motor from the other chair the polarity, I think it is, is reversed on that one. So forward is back and back is forward, but I don't really, really care about that, to be honest with the passenger one. But yeah, they look amazing. They feel really cool. They work with the car. And just a little bit more in this video, I'm going to be replacing my steering wheel, my old um, deep dish one, which I, if you guys have been watching this at the start of my channel, you'll notice I had it on the car when I first bought it. Don't really know why I took it off, because I did actually like it, but I think it was something to do with the fact that I wanted the cruise control, but I, I don't really use it, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to shove it back on. So uh, yeah, let's go and do that. Uh, so guys, before we do anything with the steering wheel, again, like the chairs, make sure you disconnect the um, negative terminal because you are dealing with the airbag and the horn. And actually on the steering wheel, you have to pop up the two covers. We've got these two little Torx bits um, either side. You can see on that side as well. 
But yeah, you have to take those off basically. So my case guys, these seem to be T27. And what you'll find is this center piece comes out and you've just got to sort of disconnect everything um, on the reverse side of it. So once inside, first thing I'm gonna do is try and uh, crack this 19 mil um, nut in the middle loose. Okay, so I cracked the uh, big nut loose. Now I'm just gonna do these two smaller ones either side. A little trick you can do, don't take this nut off fully and then sort of loosen the steering wheel up, then take it off so you don't smack yourself in the face. You can disconnect this little spade here, which is the horn, and then you need to disconnect that gray plug. Be very careful because the clock spring is behind the steering wheel, and I've heard you can damage them quite easily, so just be really careful with that. The steering wheel buttons, if you have them, these plastic pieces simply just pull off like that. They're just vanity plates. And then behind, you've got the switch gear. Pull the steering wheel off very carefully. Be careful with all the wiring. And you can then access the two Phillips heads on the back on either side. So once you've taken these two screws out, I completely forgot there is also one, you can see the hole for it just there on the inside. But this back panel comes up and it allows you to access the last two screws. So guys, now it's time to put your airbag resistor in. This is mine. And then that's basically what you should have left. And we can put the new um, like hub on and then the steering wheel. That's pretty much it. On the NRG hub, you'll notice there's a little dowel cut out there. That's for that piece there. This just simply slides over the top. Shove your column nut back on. So once that's in, you can sort of put your airbag light thing in there. And there we go, guys. My wheel is back on the car. Um, this isn't gonna stay on the car. I am getting a new one. You can see it's really tatty and old. I just wanted to get it back on the car and sort of remember myself how to do it. Don't use this video particularly as a sort of complete installation. I have forgotten how to get the horn to work because the loom, has the plugs on it and I can't remember if there's a separate plug that I need that I've got somewhere or you do something fancy with these. I can't remember for that. So just sort of take it with a pinch of salt. But yeah, that's pretty much the steering wheel install and we'll work out um, all the nuts and bolts later. But yeah, that, that's that's it. That's on and I'm ready to go. Seats are in, my steering wheel's back on, although I will be changing the steering wheel at some point. But yeah, I think these look amazing they feel amazing the steering wheel i think is going to add to it i've got some ideas of the one i'd like to buy uh yes come on together really the car just needs now the body kit sort of spray and body color i've got some stuff i want to do on the front end maybe a few engine bay dress ups obviously the stereo and sound systems going in yeah it's a lot to do still but we're getting there right so we're at the end of the video seats are in steering wheels on I think they look really sick. They make the car look amazing. Really good, like, max power sort of vibes for what I'm kind of going for. Not a full, like, complete retrim of the interior, but definitely make the car look absolutely sick. Um, as always, guys, hope you've enjoyed the video. Please leave a like. Don't forget to comment. I want to know your thoughts. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. I've also just taken this moment to shout out. I've got new merch on my store. I'm basically doing, like, badly drawn cars, effectively, on my Red Bubble shop. So um, go and check that out, um, support the channel, all that sort of stuff. Any money I make from stuff like that, I put back into mods, uh, guides, fixing, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, apart from that, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in my next video. Have fun enjoying those cars, and uh, yeah, take care.